With Virginia's primary elections now over, Republicans and Democrats are gearing up to go head to head this November. Our Jake Burns is in the studio now with the fallout from yesterday's primaries and also has more on how both sides are positioning themselves for elections in November. Jake. Well, Leland, there's a lot on the line later this year, but several key races in our area last night did make splashes. Both Joe Morrissey and Amanda Chase were voted out. Those races might be clues as to how each party is positioning themselves moving forward. Almost immediately after the primary party confetti got swept up, the focus of the Virginia political world shifted to the big prize, the balance of power at the state capitol up for grabs come November. Democracy itself is on the ballot. Women's reproductive health care freedom is on the ballot. Virginia is the last safe haven in the South. Democrats say abortion access and voting rights will be stripped if Governor Yunkin and Republicans control the whole of state government. Our Senate majority has been the one thing standing between Virginians and the Republicans' extreme agenda. Senate Democrats have prevented Republicans in Richmond from banning abortion, making it harder to vote, rolling back gun safety laws. With him, we can actually cut taxes, support and fund our police, make sure that we keep the woke stuff out of the schools and away from the schools. Meanwhile, Virginia Republicans say they present a united message now. Every candidate backed by Governor Yunkin won their primary, and a wave of wins by progressive Democrats, they say, shows Democrats have lurched too far to the left for the average Virginian. We have a governor who uh, has significant support uh, among Republicans and independents. He's articulating an agenda that has the broadest appeal. On the other side of the aisle, I think that some actions and policy perspectives have been articulated by the other party that uh, are not very appealing to the broadest cross-section of the public. The framing of both parties after the primary definitely influenced by two key races near Richmond. Democrats nominated La Charisse Aird in Senate District 13, who made abortion central to her campaign to oust Joe Morrissey. Republicans backing Glenn Sturdivant in a tight race over Amanda Chase, who describes herself as Trump in heels. Even though Youngkin didn't weigh in on that race, Chase consistently clashed with GOP leadership, and Sturdivant was a known commodity for Senate Republicans. The results really almost tell us how the campaign is going to come in the fall. Political analyst Dr. Bob Holsworth says millions in out-of-state money will pour in for both Youngkin and what some have called his flirts with the presidential race and Democrats vowing to protect abortion access post row. Everyone's going to come into Virginia to basically suggest which message is going to work. And it's really going to be about maybe 10 races total, but those races are going to be channeled with money and resources like we've never seen before. Can somehow the governor shift that narrative and shift the narrative to his claim that the Democrats are not to be trusted with a sort of uh, orientation toward the center. We'll have to see whether how that works out. But that has not been a message that the Republicans have yet to be successful in encountering in an